His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King. He's the master of everything. Good morning, this is Mark Millette coming to you from Bucharest, Romania with another Morning Mana message for you, okay, on this Friday the 22nd of July. This is the end of the week, so let's rejoice, amen. <laughs> now, the Bible tells us in First Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, excuse me, in Ephesians 1 and verse 17, listen to what he says here. This was Paul's heart's desire and prayer for the church. He says this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Not book knowledge, not the knowledge of the Greek and the Hebrew and the Chaldean, not the, uh, the wisdom and, of uh, herm hermeneutics or homo homiletics or all that other stuff, but in the knowledge of Him. How do you need knowledge of You have to have a revelation. Listen to what he says here. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now look what he says. Verse 18. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Do you know what the hope of his calling is for your life? Well, yeah, I think I'm supposed to be saved and I'm going to go to heaven one day and I go to church and, uh, and that's it. No, that's not it. It's God's will that you learn who you are. You're his child. If you're born of the Spirit of God, He wants you to have fellowship with Him. What are you going to do throughout all eternity? Well, I'm going to sing in the choir. Well, you may do that, but I'm going to tell you what, you're going to worship in Him. So if we're going to spend eternity in worshiping Him and knowing Him and fellowshipping with Him, don't you think it'd be a good idea to get started down here? Amen? Now, listen to what He says. The eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what a, what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance, and his saints. You mean I have an inheritance? Absolutely you have an inheritance. It's a gift for you, amen? You don't have to work for it. He's already provided it for you. If somebody died and left me an inheritance, and I opened it up, and I said, well, what is this? It says, this is an inheritance for you, Brother Martin. Wow, looky here. Uh, no, that's, this is not an inheritance. I mean, I have the inheritance of the Bible. This is a letter somebody wrote us thanking us for the, for the uh, teaching and preaching we're giving, and we're giving books away. But if I had an inheritance, I could read in there, and it says, listen, you own this, and you own that, and you own this, and you are this, and you have this, and now we've made you a, a, a director and this, and, or, or an administrator of the buildings, and you own it all. And I come, oh, no, I won't have anything. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, bless me. He's already blessed you. Oh, God, heal me. He's already healed you. It's a gift. Amen. He's already given it to you. All you need to do is get the eyes of your understanding unlocked. Amen. Get your heart open so that you can understand what he's saying to the church. Now, a lot of people like to get their doctrine from the Old Testament and get it from the Gospels. I love the Gospels. As a matter of fact, I've been reading them all morning. This morning I read them. I'm reading through them again. But let me tell you something. You get your doctrine in the way you live through the epistles to the church. Amen. This is what Paul said. His longing was for the church. And in the book of Revelation, the Lord Jesus is talking about the seven churches. He's not talking about the disciples in the Gospels. He's not talking about Isaiah in the book of Isaiah. He's not talking about Abraham when he come out of, of uh, or the ch Moses, when he brought the children, he's talking to the seven churches, amen? And we're in the church age. My friend, you're in the age of grace. God has baptized you into Christ. You're risen with them, and now you have a newness of life. That's what Paul said. I'm crucified with Christ, and you are too. Listen, just to two, three things he's done for you. He's died to make us live. He was made sin to make us righteous. He became weak that we may be strong. He suffered shame that we may share in his glory. The Bible tells us he went to hell that, so he could take us to heaven. He was condemned in order that we might be made justified. 
Are you a child of God this morning? Are you washing the blood? My friend, you're a very, very, very wealthy person. Don't look down. Don't mumble and murmur and say, I'm just an old son and I can't help it. You're a saint of God. Raise your head up and tell people who you are. You tell them, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. By the grace of God, I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I belong to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.